Okay, so here's a really key example where we have to find the determinant of a 4x4 four four matrix. And again, think of it this way. If you're naive here, you just plow away and you say, well, I'll use a row or column for my cofactor expansion. The matrix does not contain a single zero entry. So if you use cofactor expansion directly, you'll have to compute four cofactors for each entry of your row or column that you have selected. And now, that's four cofactors. Because the matrix is a 4 by 4, the cofactors will be determinants of 3 by 3 matrices. So then you're going to have to find four determinants of 3 by 3 matrices. That's a ton of work. So that's really, really, really bad. The idea is, let's get some zeros in this matrix. The more zeros we have, the less cofactors we have to find. And again, we can use row operations or column operations, whichever will give us the easiest way of getting zeros in the matrix. If you look at this matrix, there's a lot of different uh, angles of attack to get some zeros. Right? You have a leading one here, so you could do row 2 minus 5, row 1, row 3 plus row 1, row 4 minus 2, row 1. We could do this, or we could also look at this column. We have 6, negative 6, 6, and a positive 3 here. So we could easily do row 4 plus row 3, row 2 plus row 3, and then kill the negative 6 with the positive 3 here. One other option. And there's a lot of other options. So let's go with killing these two 6s with a negative, and then killing the negative with this positive 3. Or, if you prefer, we can kill every 6 with the 3 here. Same thing. Let's do that. Let's use this 3 to kill all of these 6's. So let's do row 2 minus 2 row 1. Then let's do row 3 plus 2 row 1. And row 4 minus 2 row 1. And once again, we're using three times the row operation of adding a multiple of a row to a different row. And we know this will not change the determinant. So we'll have a completely different matrix, but it will still have the same determinant. So let's recopy the first row. We're not changing it. So we had 1, negative 2, 3, 1. Row 2 minus 2 row 1, so 5 minus 2, 3. Negative 9 minus 2 times negative 2, that's negative 9 plus 4, negative 5. 6 minus 2 times 3, 6 minus 6 is 0. 3 minus 2 times 1, positive 1. Let's keep going. Row 3 now plus 2 of row 1, so negative 1 plus 2, positive 1. 2 plus 2 times negative 2 is 2 minus 4 negative 2, negative 6 plus 2 times 3 plus 6 is 0, negative 2 plus 2 times 1, also 0. Finally, row 4 minus 2 row 1, so 2 minus 2, 0, 8 minus 2 times negative 2 is 8 plus 4, gives us 12, 6 minus 6 is 0, 1 minus 2, negative 1. And the idea here is we have introduced three zeros in the third column. So now we can use cofactor expansion along the third column because it has the most zeros. And again, we don't have to bother with A23, C23 because it's going to get killed. Same thing with C33. It's multiplied by zero, it gets killed. Same thing with C43. Multiplying it by zero, it gets killed. So all we have is going to be A13 times C13. Actually, let me keep going down. So what's A13? Well, it's just 3 times cofactor has two parts, negative 1 to the 1 plus 3, negative 1 to the 4, that's positive 1. And now C13, we have the determinant of the previous matrix, 
after deleting the first row, third column. And we have the determinant of now a 3 by 3 matrix. The first row, 3, negative 5, 1. The second row, 1, negative 2, 0. And the third and final row, 0, 12, negative 1. And once again here, let's not use cofactor expansion directly. Sure, we have a 0 in this column, in this row, or this column, or this row. Let's do better, because 1, 0 means 2 non-zero entries, 2 cofactors. If we introduce one more 0, we'll have only one cofactor to compute. So the idea is, well, what do we do? And here's there's a ton of options. We could do row 3 plus row 1, make this 0. We could also do column 2 plus 12 of column 3 and kill this entry. And I have two zeros here. Or we could do row 1 minus 3 row 2 and kill this 3. So there's a ton of options. We could also do... Actually, that's basically it. Okay, so just for fun, just to shake things up a little bit, we've used here three row operations. It would be very easy to use a fourth one by doing row 3 plus row 1. But just to use a column operation, we'll do column 2 plus 12 of column 3. And if you don't like this, you can on your own do row 3 plus row 1 and make sure you get the same answer. So let's see what this gives us. This will be three times the determinant. And then the nice thing is, if you add a multiple of a column to a different column, this does not change the determinant, so it stays the same. We are only changing column two. We copy the first and third column. So what do we have? 12 plus negative 12, zero. Negative two plus zero, negative two. Negative 5 plus 12, positive 7. And now in the third row, we have two zeros, so we use cofactor expansion along row 3. Once again, we don't have to compute C31. It's multiplied by 0, gets killed. Same goes for C32. Multiplied by 0, gets killed. So all we're left with is A11, A33, C33. So don't forget your 3. 3 times A33, C33. Well, A33 is negative 1. So this will be negative 1 times 3, negative 3. The cofactor is C33, negative 1 to the 6, positive 1, times the determinant of the matrix obtained from the previous one after we delete the third row, third column. And we have the matrix 3, 7, 1, negative 2. And here we have a 2 by 2 matrix, no biggie, AD minus BC. So negative 3, AD, negative 6, negative 1 times 7, negative 7. So what do we have? Well, negative 3, Negative 6, negative 7 is negative 13. Negative 3, negative 13 gives us positive 39. And we have the determinant of this 4 by 4 matrix. And look at how much work was involved. It really wasn't that bad. If you don't think this is great, if you're a skeptic, then find the determinant of this matrix with cofactor expansion directly without introducing zeros and see how much work is required. And you'll really appreciate how slick of a solution using column operations or row operations, how slick of a solution it actually allows us to produce. And this is always how you should find determinants. Either with row operations or column operations, get a column where all the entries are zero but one, or a row where all the entries are 0 but 1, and then use cofactor expansion, because in every case, 
you'll only have to compute one cofactor. Here was C13, here it was C33. Okay, so, and the same goes for a 5x5 five five matrix, 6x6, six six. same idea. Get a row or column where all the entries are 0 but 1, one cofactor, and every time you use cofactor expansion, the matrix drops down a size. You see, 4x4 four four matrix, one cofactor, 3x3 three three matrix, one cofactor, a 2x2 two two matrix. So if you have a 5x5 five five matrix, it's just one additional step to reduce from the 5x5 five five to the 4x4. Four four. So as far as computations go, this is really the end of the story. One thing worth mentioning is that the determinant has other properties, and again, they are rather intricate, and proving them would require us about a month of setting up new ideas, so we won't do this, but here are some properties of the determinant. So take A to be an n by n matrix. Let's look at some properties. And same with B. So take A and B, both square matrices of the same size. So first question would be, what if we have the determinant of A times B? And the determinant happens to be a multiplicative function. So the determinant of A, B is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And once again, this is really a non-trivial property. It's really not clear why this is true, but we could prove it. It would take us a month. We don't have that much time, so we're just going to take it for granted. So the lesson here is that determinant is a multiplicative function. And of course, the same is true over a longer product, right? If I gave you the determinant of ABC, for example, where all A, B, and C were square of the same size, this would be the determinant of A times the determinant of B times the determinant of C. And the same goes for a longer product. Now, another property is, what if we multiply the entire matrix A by a real number K, and we ask, what is the determinant of this matrix? Here you have to be careful. If you remember, if you multiply a single row of A by K, the determinant is multiplied by K. But now we multiply the entire matrix by K. Think of it this way. If you multiply an entire matrix by K, you multiply all of its entries. So think of multiplying all the entries of A by K one row at a time. Multiply all the entries of A, uh, sorry, multiply all the entries of the first row of A, that multiplies the determinant by K. Then multiply all of the entries of the second row by K, so that's another multiple of K. Then multiply all of the entries of the third row of A, multiplied by K, and since there are k rows, you get, sorry, not k rows, but there are n rows, a is an n by n matrix. Since there are n rows to a, we get multiples of k appearing n times. If you multiply all of the entries of the first row by k, then the entries in the second row by k, then in the third row by k up to the nth row, you have multiplied all of the entries of a by k, so what you have is not just k determinant of a, it's k to the n times the determinant of a. So another key property of the determinant. The determinant of ka is k to the n, where n is the number of rows of a times the determinant of a. One quick reminder, if you transpose the matrix, it does not change the determinant. One key observation, and this you can check by yourselves, the determinant of i for any size is just equal to 1. And if you think of it geometrically, right, if you multiply a region, say in the xy plane, by the matrix i, nothing happens. Everything times i is itself, so the matrix i does not change area, nor does it change volume 
and so on. So the scaling factor is just going to be 1. It leaves everything the same, and that's the geometric intuition here. So the determinant of a, b, the determinant of a times the determinant of b, k, a becomes k to the n, the determinant of a, transpose a doesn't change the determinant, the determinant of i is 1, and here's one last property, and I will leave the proof of this. If you use the previous properties, you can, and you don't have to use all of them, you can prove that if a is invertible, so if a inverse exists, then its determinant, and again, think of it this way. You're saying, suppose you know the determinant of a, and then you have a inverse. And you say, well, could I find the determinant of a inverse without actually computing it? And the answer is yes. The determinant of a inverse is simply 1 over the determinant of a. And there's a nice property here that you can sort of come up with, or a nice result, I should say. Think of it this way. The only problem here would be the determinant of a to be 0. If that's equal to 0, then 1 over 0 is not defined. And that's one more equivalency for invertibility. This is a nice little theorem. Again, this you should prove using the above properties. This is a nice little example. And here's a nice little theorem which I will leave you with. A square matrix A, so if A is an n by n matrix A, a square matrix A is invertible if and only if, and again this is just a logical equivalence, so it says we're about to write two statements, they may look different, but they're actually saying the same thing, so they are either both true or both false. Here's the result. A, square matrix A is invertible if and only if its determinant is not zero. And this is a really fundamental result, which connects the determinant of a matrix with invertibility. So the only way to have an invertible matrix is for it to have a non-zero determinant, and conversely, if the determinant would be, say, non-zero, A is automatically invertible. If you flip this, if the determinant of A is zero, A is not invertible, it is a singular matrix. In our next video, we will revisit the formula for a, the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. If you remember, we have this really nice little formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. The question could be, what about a 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 or any square invertible matrix? Do we have a formula for the inverse? The answer is yes, and it will involve cofactors and the determinant of the matrix.